Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that is to spend some time together in the Word of God, in the Bible. And so as we read the Bible together, it helps us to learn and grow and draw closer to God. And so every day we read one chapter of Scripture together, and we're currently working our way through the book of Genesis. And so today we come to Genesis chapter 35. And so I hope when we're all done, you'll take a moment and read the whole of Genesis 35. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to read just a portion, the very beginning of the chapter. We'll be looking today at verses 1 through 5. And so if you have a Bible handy, or if you want to look it up on your phone, you can just Google it or pull up the Bible app. Uh, I would invite you to join me in Genesis chapter 35, beginning in verse 1. Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all those who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods that you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me whatever, wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all of the foreign gods that they had and the rings in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. Then they set out, and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them, so that no one pursued them. By this point in the story, Jacob and his clan have been through years of both blessing and struggle. They have lived as a nomadic people. They have traveled from region to region. Now God is calling them to a new place. That new place is Bethel. This is the same place where Jacob had his vision of a stairway leading to heaven and he saw angels ascending and descending upon the stairway and at the top of the stairway he saw a vision of God and God spoke with him. The name Bethel simply means in Hebrew, house of God. So God is calling he and his family back to this holy place. But before Jacob will allow his full clan to settle in, in Bethel, this holy place where he had this great encounter with God, this house of God, they must prepare themselves spiritually. So did you notice what Jacob required of them? Let's go back and reread verse 32, uh, verse 2 rather, in, in chapter 35. And so Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods that you have. So that's the starting point. And he also tells them to purify themselves and change their clothes, kind of symbolic of, of entering into a new time and a new thing. But the first part, I think, is the really essential piece. Get rid of your foreign gods. Now, what does he mean by that exactly? They have been living among the Canaanites. The Canaanites were polygamists. That is to say, they worshipped many different gods. There are other religious practices where there are many, many gods. And so they worshipped many gods. And in fact, they would sometimes literally carry their gods with them wherever they were. And they would have them in their homes. In other words, these gods were idols. They were pieces of wood or stone or precious metal that had been carved or formed or fashioned into some kind of a shape that represented to them one of their many gods. 
And what would often happen is they would, when they settled in a region, set up little shrines or altars in their homes where they could worship these various gods. But now, Jacob was calling them to dwell with the one true God. To do that, it meant putting aside, leaving behind these false gods and idols so that there would be nothing that hindered them or distracted them from the true God. I wonder how many of us are wanting to come to God, to dwell, if you will, metaphorically, in the house of God the one true God of the universe. I believe many of us desire a true encounter with him. We desire to have experiences of worship that just draw us into his presence in powerful ways. We want to have times of prayer that are, that are deep and profound experiences with God. But it's possible that some of us are still carrying around our idols. They may not be physical statues made of wood or stone, but there are things of this world, things that have laid claim to our heart in some way, that for us are our gods, our idols, and they often will hinder us from our full experience of God. For us today, those idols, those other gods, if you will, in our lives might be money or fame or power or authority or influence or just popularity on social media. The idols we carry can be different for all of us. But we need to search our hearts and be sure that we have laid them down so that we can come to God. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, in this story we are reminded, just as they had idols in their lives, that many of us still have idols in our lives, and those things can be a hindrance. They can be something that keeps us from, from coming fully to you, things that maybe have held on to our hearts in some way or have held our, our passion that we've loved in the way that we should have loved you, Lord. And so help us, like they did, to lay down our gods, to release all those idols in our lives, and focus our hearts and our minds solely on you. Help us to do that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.